Hello and welcome to another video of Elevate Exam Math Papers. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Level 1 uh, Functional Skills Maths Calculator paper, and it's an Excel paper. The duration of this test is one hour and a half. Um, however, we may not uh, spend all that time, but that's the time you'll get during the exam. Uh, as you can see, it's very important uh, to absolutely read the instructions uh, that are on the front page of the exam paper. Here it says you must have pen calculator, HP pencil, uh, eraser, ruler, uh, graduated in centimeter and millimeter, protractor, pair of compasses, tracing paper may be used. That's uh, if you require to use tracing paper for certain questions. Instructions use black ink uh, audible point uh, pen. Uh, fill in the boxes at the top of this page uh, with your name. So that is here, where you have the candidate surname, and that's other names as first name, middle name. If you have one, you know, send a number. Each uh, school or college or examination center has a center number. And then the candidate number. Yeah, you'll be given a candidate number. And then here, um, that's where you're supposed to sign yeah before you do the exam okay yeah so that's your declaration that this is you and uh, you are taking uh, your exam uh, here it's recommended that you answer all questions write your final answers in the boxes provided yeah for each question there's a box provided you need to write the answers there at the final answers and you answer the questions the space is provided. Yeah, there may be more spaces than you need. Okay. Uh, sometimes they give you extra uh, paper pages, blank pages uh, with the test. Um, and then you must show you must show clearly how you get your answers in the spaces provided as well. Uh, obviously, it's absolutely important uh, and vital to show the steps. Uh, on how you get to the final answer, yeah, because the process to get to, or to reach the final answer, there are marks awarded based on the steps uh, formats. Okay, um, here it says certain di diagrams are not accurately drawn unless otherwise indicated. Yeah, okay, and uh, this is a calculator paper, so calculators are allowed. You are asked to use it or you can use it okay and then here is a piece of advice see if you can it does not have the pi button take the value of pi to be 3.14 and total marks is uh, for this section is 42 for the calculator uh, all together with the non calculator that's uh, 56 now let's just get to business and start answering the questions okay straight away now question number one says here are five numbers yeah so you have a list of numbers there calculate the range of these numbers here they ask us to calculate the range of these numbers so let's just do that okay now what is the range range is just basically the highest value okay minus the lowest value all right so the highest number here is 13958 and the lowest value is 4249 4249 so all you have to do is 13958 minus 4249 and that just gives you 9700 and nine now thousand seven hundred and nine okay that's the answer for that question or that part of the question okay however now here here um actually yeah um just follow the advice of the exam uh, instructions write the answers the final answers in there in the provided box yeah okay so it's easy and not to uh, follow instructions uh, okay so please do that now here it says use estimation to show a check of your answer basically when you see the word estimation or to estimate it's basically they just want you to round it 
get to the nearest number okay so basically round those numbers all right so let's look at that number and that number so let's round each number to the nearest thousand yeah to the nearest thousand so that number to the nearest thousand so basically you are saying is that number close to 13,000 or is it close to 14,000 basically yeah which one is it close to this is 958 away from 13,000 but it's just where is it 42 away from 14,000 so it's close to 14,000 so that's rounded it's 14,000 let's round this number is this number close to 4,000 what is it close to 5,000 obviously it's close to 4,000 okay so there you all right okay now all you need to do is just subtract those two numbers and that gives you 10,000 okay yeah so that's uh, how you estimate how you estimate um, and check the values now if we if we round this to the nearest thousand as well 9,709 that to the nearest th uh, thousand that's just basically 10,000 surprise surprise and that's the answer we got here as well yeah so there you go excellent well done and that's another mark okay now let's move on to the next question question number two so now question number two says okay question number two says um emily is making a sausage roll sausage rolls for a party she has this list of ingredients so for four sausage rolls she needs 450 grams of sausage meat one egg one red onion 250 grams of ready made pastry okay so those are the ingredients emily wants to make 75 sausage rolls for the party that's how much um, sausage rolls she needs to make yeah oops and let's just rub this off because we need to see that oops we can't do that is it uh, yes we can let's just try yeah okay so there 75 sausage rolls okay now um ready-made pastry comes in packs yeah so that's another vital information it comes in packs okay now we're talking about the ready-made pastry it comes in packs they said okay now there are 500 grams of pastry in each pack so one pack of pastry is 500 grams okay good now emily thinks nine packs of ready-made pastry is the smallest number she needs to make 75 rolls now let's see if that's if that's true yeah so let's just do this um okay I'm just trying there are so many different ways but i'm just trying to choose the most convenient way for you guys now okay let's just do it this way then yeah so all you need to do is like now let's find what is how much uh, pastry you need to make one sausage roll yeah so in order for you to find that out, you say 250 divided by 4 gives you 62.5 gram of pastry. That's for one roll. Basically one sausage roll, yeah? That's what you need for one roll. You need that amount. Now, you want to find out what you need for 75 rolls. Yeah? So what did you do to get... To go from there to there you times by 75 obviously now you need to do the same thing here i just use different color just to um show you uh, the answer okay so you say 62.5 times 75 you put that in your calculator yeah and that gives you 4687 point five grams that's the needed amount 
is that to make 75 rolls yeah so that amount to make 75 rolls now now let's see if that's if that's um, identical to what uh, Emily says or like if Emily predicted correctly she said that we need five we need nine packs of 500 gram so let's say 500 gram times nine that gives us 4500 gram that's what Emily thinks yeah, Emily thinks that that's what we need but or however we proved that we need more we proved that we need more we need 4687.5 grams now is Emily correct obviously no she is not correct she is not correct okay so let's try and uh, write the answer in the correct place okay just to follow the instructions okay here's the box all right so we say no she's not correct and then you've shown your thinking you've shown the steps the, the examiner can see uh, that you've underlined vital information yeah and i recommend that you do that yeah just to extract the important information you need to answer this question now that's it full four marks okay now let's move on to the next question this question number three says gareth is changing his gas supplier to ges energy ges energy and um, he has this information here it says um, annual fee 231 pounds 65 pence per year plus 4.71 pence for each kilowatt per one kilowatt yeah and then it says he, he can get or you can get the customer five percent off the total charge if you pay by direct debit okay now here it says last year gareth used that amount of gas okay now which is forty two thousand kilowatts of gas now gareth thinks he will gareth thinks he will um use the same amount of gas this year he will pay and then here it says he will pay by direct debit okay the question says where can the total gas bill that gareth pays uh, that the gas bill gareth will pay by using um ges energy now all you need to do is you need to find out how much um units he uses times the price per unit so let's use last year's uh, usage so that's forty two thousand times 4.771 pence that's the price per unit okay put that into the calculator then you get a big number one nine um, seven eight two zero yeah yeah hundred ninety seven thousand eight hundred and twenty pence yeah you convert that into pounds yeah so basically you just divide by 100 all right if we divide that by 100 okay uh, what color is that okay divide that by 100 you knock that zero with that zero and that zero just moves one here so it becomes there therefore you put that in the calculator anyway you don't have to do it this way all right 1978 pounds and 20 pence fine now we need to add this fixed fee or annual fee yeah so that's just a fixed charge of 231 pounds and 65 pence you add up these final cost would be um, 2209.85 so 2209 pounds and 85 pence okay now does Gareth qualify for the 5% off if he pays by direct debit? Yes, he does, because he pays by direct debit, okay? He pays by direct debit. Now, what do we need to do? So we need to find out what's 5% of 
of 2,209.85. Yeah, so 5% means what? 5 over 100. Off means times 2,209.85. Put that in the calculator. You, the calculator will give you a number. You will get 110 pounds. And... Okay, just bear with me. I'm just going to use my calculator now again. I think I made a mistake. So that is well, 0 0.05 times 2209.85. Yeah, that gives you 110 pounds and 49 pence. All right. Now, all you need to do is you need to subtract the total bill by the discount. Yeah, or the discount from the total bill. So that's 2209.85. Minus 110.49. That gives you um, 2099.36. Yeah, it gives you 2099 pounds and 36 pence and 36 pence. Okay, and that's your final answer there. Excellent. Yeah, well, here they gave you plenty of space to to write the answer in. Yeah, so the answer goes in there anyway, 2,209.36 pence. All right, that's five marks, five full marks. All right. Okay, good. Now let's move on to question number four. Now question number four says, Sam wants to create a space of a space for water play in the village hall. He has this diagram of the floor in the village hall. The space for water play must be, there are three conditions. Condition number one says, in the shape of a rectangle, like so, which is 3.5 meters by four meters. It should be at least two meters away from other activity spaces okay condition number three at least three meters away from any door all right so we have to satisfy those three conditions okay and uh, size of the shape is 3.5 meters by four meters now let's see here where are the doors all those thick black lines are the doors, okay? So, first door is there. Second door is here. And the third one is there. Good. And all the activities are those gray areas. That, 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 and that. Okay? So, they said, yeah, that it should be... Let's start with the door. It should be what? two meters or three meters away from any door so i i can see there's a big gap here so probably we will draw our rectangular area in here now so what's a one meter here this key says one square length on the grid represents one meter so basically that's one meter and that's one meter okay that's what they mean all right so let's find, so we need to stay three meters away from any door and two meters away from any activity space. Let's do that. Three meters away from any door. All right, so the door is there. So what is it? One, two, all right, so let's just say that's what? One, two, three. Okay, so we can do that. So maybe we can draw here. So that's three doors away. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. Yeah, that satisfies it. Yeah. So probably we will do something. No, let's just do it here, maybe. Yeah. So one, two, no, okay. Let's do it there. Yeah, let's do it there just to be on the safe side. So there. So that's. That is just make it a straight line on that line. Okay. Now let's redo it. Make it a straight line on that line. Okay. There. there. Now that's four meters. 
You don't have to write that down, but just so we understand. Now here we need to make it three and a half. That's one, two, three, and a half. Yeah. Obviously you will have a ruler and then you'll make it nice and neat. Yeah, and that's four. Okay, so that's one, two, three. And that's half of the box, half of the square, half of the meter. It's just half a meter, okay? And then you draw a straight line there. Done. Okay. Let's just do it this way, okay? Because if you do it that way, that looks like three quarters, yeah, just for the thickness of the square. Now let's do the rectangle. Let's just do it this way. So that's 3.5 meters. Now, okay, let's see if this satisfies the conditions. Anyway, that's four meters, and that's three and a half meters. So condition one is satisfied, done. Now let's look, is this three meters away from the door, the nearest door? It's, that's too far and that's too far. So this is what? One, two, three, four, five. If you go diagonally, it's one, two, three, yeah? Three away, all right? So that's three meters away, well done. Now this one, let's look at the nearest uh, activity. It's one, two, three away. And they said at least two meters away. So that's uh, sorted as well, excellent. So we satisfied all the conditions, therefore we get our full marks. And I think that was full uh, three marks. There are different uh, layouts you can use as well but we chose this one in this case. Now, well done, excellent. Let's, let's move on to the next question. So question number five says, here is information uh, about uh, the distances uh, traveled in miles by some people yesterday, okay? Uh, here you have a list of numbers. Sandro starts to show this information in a grouped frequency table, okay? So here we have a group frequency table. So they've already done uh, the the table here, um, the categories. So they categorize the distances uh, in miles into one to five, six to 10, into groups of five. So, okay. So we need to carry on the same way here as well. And the maximum number here we can see is 22. So let's see what we can do. So it should be 11 to 15, and then it should be 16 to 20. Then it should be 21 to 25. Done. Yeah. Here they've done the first tally for us. All the numbers from 1 to 5. They've done all the numbers from 1 to 5. And that's eight numbers in a, represented in a tally and then represented as a frequency as well. Now we need to find 6 to 10. Yeah. All the numbers uh, from 6 to 10. Uh, 6 to 10 here, no we don't have, we've got 6 to 10 here, 7 is, yeah, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, whoa, a lot of numbers there, okay, they're all in the 6 to 10 category, and that is, that's 7 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, when you write down a tally in a tally format, um, the fifth one, you just do a diagonal line, okay? And then you say six, seven. Done. So that is seven. Represented as a frequency is seven. Now let's find 11 to 15. So you got one, two, three. Yeah, you got one, two, three. And that's three. Okay, done. Next, let's do 16 to 20. 16 to 20. Go 18. Yeah, that's it. One, one. Yeah. And finally, let's do 21 to 25. So that's one. And that's just one. Okay. So there. All right. And that's our tally chart, which is complete uh, with the correct. Uh, representation as a frequency. Excellent. That was question five. So let's make sure we're going to do the next question. Question number six. Yeah. Okay. Question number six says, yeah, question number six says, uh, Maninda wants to put slaps in part of her garden. 
She wants to put slabs in part of her garden. Okay. She has this sketch. Um, all corners are right angles. Okay. Each slab is the is in the shape of a square with sides of length 600 millimeter. Okay. Here's a square of 600 millimeters. Uh, 600 millimeters, basically, of each slab. Okay. Now, Maninda thinks she needs 65 slabs. Yeah, for the garden. Basically, is she correct? Okay. Are 65 slabs enough for this part of the garden? Now, the part of the garden we want is that gray area. Okay. Obviously, we cannot find the area of that uh, shape because it looks like a compound shape. So we need to split this shape into two parts. Just make a straight line there. Let's call that area A and we call this area B. Okay. Area A and area B. Fine. Now here, let's find out. So area A, what are the length and the width of area A? Now, the length or the height of area A, that bit corresponds to that bit. So if that's 3,600 millimeters, therefore that's 3,600 millimeters. Okay, good. Now we need to find the width, that width. That corresponds to that part. However, that length, that width is parallel to this width. Yeah. So it's basically that long width minus this short width. Okay. Those two parallel lines, the long parallel line minus the short parallel line. So make 7,200 minus 4,800. That gives you, um, if you put that in the calculator, you get 2,400. Yeah, 2,400. That gives you 2,400. Excellent. So the width here is 2,400. Now, let's find area A. So we say area A is 2,400 times 3,600. And that gives you, what does that give you? I'm just going to use my 2,400 times 3,600. That gives you big number, 8 million. 640,000 yeah that's millimeters squared okay now actually let's use a different color for area b okay so area b may use a black one yeah maybe okay so let's area b let's say area b so what's the width of area b it's that long side which corresponds to that yeah which is 7200 and the height is that, so you times by 1,800. What does that give you? 7,200 times 1,800. That gives you 12,960,000 millimeters squared. Okay, millimeters squared. So total area, yeah, you just put the addition of both. Now we can just find that uh, each area by each area, like what, how many slabs does each area need? So all you need to do is uh, you need to say that 8,640,000 divided by, by what? By the area of the slab. That's the slab. So what's the area of the slab? 600 times 600. That gives you and four zeros that gives you 360,000 millimeters squared okay so you divide that by 360,000 millimeters squared and that gives you um, so I just need to redo that okay so 8,640,000 Divide by 360,000. That gives you 24 slabs, 24 slabs, okay? And you do the same thing here. 
So area that area A needs yeah area A needs twenty four slabs. Okay, we found that. Now let's find that area B. So that's the total area of area B, twelve million nine hundred sixty thousand millimeters squared. You divide that by three hundred and sixty thousand. And that gives you 36 slabs. Okay, so area B needs 36 slabs. You add up those two. Total slabs needed is 60. 60. Now, let's answer the question. It says, um, Maninda thinks she needs 65 slabs for this part of this garden. Are 65 slabs enough for this part of the garden? Is it? Yes. Why? Because all you need is 60. If you've done all this calculation and you don't answer that question by either yes or no, and then provided that yes is the correct answer or no, it's the correct answer, whatever the case may be, yeah, you get the mark. If you don't say that, you lose the mark and you get five out of six, even though you showed the whole work. Yeah. Excellent. So that's uh, six marks because there's a lot of thinking and there's a lot of uh, uh, processes to go through. All right. There. Obviously, there are so many different ways to answer that question. However, we've done it this way today. Yeah. That was question number six, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was. Now, let's do question number seven. Quickly, we almost done. Question number seven says, Graham is the manager of fast food restaurant, and of fast food restaurant, and the table shows the amount of money lost due to food waste. Okay, due to food waste uh, for five days. So Monday was hundred and ninety. Okay, and uh, Tuesday was 250, uh, Wednesday was 210, Thursday was 345, and Friday was 400. Okay, 190, 250, 210, 345, and 400. Okay, there. Now, here it says, Graham wants to show, to draw the graph to show the amount of money lost due to food waste okay here it says draw a suitable graph yeah draw a suitable graph all right so now let's look at this fine so here all you need to do is um let's just choose that okay so that's sorted um here you either do a line graph or a bar chart okay line graph or a bar chart um i would do a bar chart okay i'll do a bar chart for you today so the numbers go up to 400 first of all make sure the scale is correct and it's even yeah and the scale is added constantly with constant number yeah so now here if that's zero then let's just do that's 50 100 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, yeah? So that's 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, okay? Let's make this thin, actually, okay? So there. Good. Now... Let's, we need to label uh, with the days. We need to label with the days, yeah. Actually, along the x-axis, we always write the numbers or um, the amount of money, yeah. So, the accumulation. However, the categories always go on the, on the x-axis, yeah. So, here you can just say, um, yeah, say amount of money okay and then here they say days all right 
Now here, let's say that's Monday. You leave a gap, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday. So Monday was 190. So it goes up to 190. So if that's 200, then 190 is there. Because each line represents 10. Obviously, with you use a ruler, then you try to make it as straight as possible. You leave a gap. The bars do not link or they're not attached next to each other. Okay. Now, Tuesday, Tuesday is 250. So it goes up to 250 there. Down, another bar there. Okay. Now, Wednesday is 210. Oops, okay, so the computer did that, excellent. Wednesday is 210, so it goes from there, downwards on a straight line, as straight as possible, there, okay? And Thursday, Thursday is 345, so if 350 is that, 340 is this, 345, is between the two lines it's there okay and then you go down there all right oops no we don't want that okay yeah okay friday is 400 yeah so that's straight up from 400 down obviously you move along that thick line okay make it as straight as possible with the use of ruler, yeah. Um, obviously, you have to give your graph a title, mm, yeah. So here you say um, money lost due to food waste. Okay, that's it. Yeah. And that gets you your full three marks. One mark for scale, one mark for labels, and one mark for the graph that's uh, photograph that's drawn accurately. Okay. Now, let's move on to the next question. Next question says, write one and three quarters as a percentage. Now, what do you, because since this is a calculator paper, okay, so one and three quarters, so it consists of one and three quarters. So one is one anyway, okay? All you need to do is, you need to change the three quarters into a decimal. Because you want to go, if you want to go from fraction, and you want to end up in uh, percentage, you have to go through decimal first, okay? Right, so from fraction to decimal to percentage, all right? You need to change this into a decimal. So what is that? That is 3 divided by 4. It's basically 0 0.75. And then 1 plus 0 0.75 is 1.75. What do you do with that? Now change it to a percentage. You times by 100. And that gives you 175%. Done. Yeah? That's all you need to do. Now next question says... Um, one and two thirds. We need that as a two des as a decimal, and correct to two decimal places. Yeah. So again, it's made out of one and two thirds. Let's find what's two thirds. Two thirds is two divided by three, and that gives you zero point six 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 six. Anyway, it's six recurring. All right. However, they want this correct to two decimal places. You draw the line, oops, after the second decimal place, okay, there. Now, that number, that six, that's on the right of the blue line, that's called the decider, okay? That decider, you ask yourself, is that number five and above, yeah? Well, yes, it is in this case. It's five. It's above than five, it's more than five, which is six. Yeah. If any number that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
what you do to it yeah after you said yes it is more than five therefore all you need to do is you need to add one to the number on the other side of the line okay so basically you round up yeah and that and the numbers on the other side become 0 0.67 all the numbers on the right hand side of the line yeah you just ignore them okay they tend to zeros and you don't count them so now that's correct to two decimal places now what do you do with that you add the one to the 0 0.67 you had you add those two and that gives you 1.67 and that's one and two thirds as two as decimal um, correct to two decimal places okay that's easy to marks as well fine now let's move on to question number nine question number nine says natasha is designing a building yeah with a restaurant on the top floor she needs to know how long it will take for a total of 40 people to travel in the lift from the ground floor to the restaurant natasha uses this formula yeah so the formula says total number of people to travel multiply by 79 divide by 8 time to travel in seconds okay that comes out from there However, Natasha thinks it will take more than six minutes for a total of 40 people to travel in the lift from the ground floor to the restaurant. Is she correct, basically? Yeah, so let's find out. So total number of people is there. So that's 40. Multiply by 79. So 40 times 79 that gives you um that gives you 3160 yeah and then you divide that by eight and that gives you 395 seconds good now what we need to do is we need to compare 395 seconds with six minutes now, so six minutes, how many seconds is that? 60 seconds in a minute, that gives you 360 seconds. So, Natasha thinks it will take more than six minutes. She thinks it will take more than 360 seconds, yeah, for a total of 40 people to travel in the lift, yeah? Is she correct? Yes, because it took more than 360. It took 395 seconds. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and that gets you four marks. One mark for saying yes and three marks for the rest of the process. Yeah, okay, here. Again, <laughs> we need to write in the box, all right? Although the examiners, you know, uh, they will not be too fussy about that, but, you know, yeah, it's just good to uh, follow the instructions. Now, let's move on to question number 10. Now, question number 10 says, uh, question number 10 says, uh, George is a farmer. He is going to put water pipe along the edges of the field. Along the edges of the field. Um, George draws this sketch of the field, okay? Water piping costs 0 0.59 pounds per meter, or basically 59 pence per meter. Okay, that's the cost. All right, 59 pence. Now, calculate the total cost of the water piping George needs for this field. Okay, so basically, the piping along goes along the edges of the field. Basically, you need to find the perimeter. Yeah. So what's the perimeter? It's all the sides added together. Yeah. So 90 plus 26 plus 26 plus 42 plus 64 plus 68 meters. You add up all these. Yeah. You add them all up. And that get, gives you... 
316 meters. Okay. Now all you need to do is 316 meters times 0 0.59. Make sure it's in the correct format. Now this is in the pound format. Okay. So 316 meters. times 0 0.59 that gives you 186 pounds and 44 pence that's the total cost for water piping uh, for the field okay and that gets you three marks now here here it says john is organizing charity sailing race on the sea he starts uh, to draw this accurate scale map of the course yeah the key says one centimeter on the map is half kilometer on the sea okay sailors begin the race at the start and follow the course uh, to the finish john says the course has a total distance of more than 18 kilometer is john correct is he Let's find out. Okay, so that's the start and that's the finish. Yeah, it's in that direction. Yeah, yeah, and then that's the finish line or the finish point. Now, here they gave you that's three centimeter, that's four point five centimeter, that's six point five centimeter. You need to measure with your ruler that I've calculated that earlier on. That's four centimeters. And with the ruler, this is six centimeters. And with the ruler, that's nine centimeters. Yeah, nine, six, and then four. Yeah, all you need to do is add up all the sides. Yeah, and uh, find the total uh, distance on the map. Yeah, all that added up together. Yeah, basically um, three plus 4.5 plus 6.5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 9 that gives you um, 33 centimeters on the map yeah so one centimeter is half a kilometer all you need to do now is 33 times half and that gives you 16.5 kilometers now John said that the total distance would be or is more than 18 kilometers. Is he correct? Is he? No, he's not correct. We proved it that it is less than 18 and it's actually 16.5 kilometers. Okay, and that gets you four marks. Easy four marks again. So the key point uh, for level one questions is reading the questions and understanding the questions okay and underlining the key information now the final part of question 11 part b here it says john writes a large check to be used for publicity john says we have raised ninety-seven thousand four hundred and three pounds for charity write this number on the check for john so this is the pound sign you need to write that in figures in here okay so that is what 70 so that's 97 thousand yeah now you leave a small gap yeah 97,403 403 pounds and that is how to write that number in figures in figures and that gets you one more excellent so i i think we came to the uh, end of our calculator paper exam yeah i hope you found that very useful yeah and uh, please please uh, follow the instructions and uh, try not to rush into the question and understand the question you got plenty of time you got one hour and a half uh, however um, a lot of students struggle with level one because they do not read the question over and over again. They do not underline the vital information and they do not answer the required questions, just like 
where it says, is John correct, obviously, or is so-and-so correct, yeah? So you have to say after you do the calculation, yes or no, yeah, based on the calculation, because that gets you one mark as well. All right, so good luck uh, with your exams, and uh, until another video, uh, thank you for listening, and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.